What is up guys, it's your boy Swell, I'm here and back with another classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now, today we'll be covering a topic in the game that I'm quite passionate about, and it's leveling. Not only leveling, but leveling in classic WoW, what it has to do with the game itself, and how incursions is basically the absolute opposite of what I want them to be, and I don't think it's good for the game. This video is going to be a little bit of a rant, so be warned about that. It is going to be a little bit neg negatively loaded, and I don't like doing this at the start of a phase. Like, phase 3 just came out two days ago, and I would rather just be filled with optimism, happiness, and just enjoy the phase, but to me the incursions are definitely not hitting the mark, and uh, the based on what I'm seeing from Classic WoW, the developers as well, they have a totally different mindset, because they seem to be thinking that the incursions themselves are good, but just giving either too much experience, or giving too much gold, which those are two big factors, but not the only ones, but in this video, once again, we'll be covering the blue post about the incursions. I'm just going to go through everything here step by step. So we have the blue post first, then we have my thoughts on incursions, and then we have what I wanted to see them do slash a possible fix that you may or may not agree with. Now before I start this, please let me know your thoughts on incursions down below in the comment section. Let me know if you love the incursions, if you hate them, if you've been spamming them as well. At this point, once again, we are a little bit over two days in, we're two and a half days in to the game itself, and I just woke up so like i have been playing this game for two days i have five level 50s i have five level 50s i have one level 45 one level 44 and a bunch of level 41s comparing that to back to phase two at this point in the game i had two max levels barely two max levels now i'm sitting on five really chill and I still am halfway on two more characters as well, that I wasn't even intending to level. So to me, once again, the Nightmare Incursions are just too good. But either way, let's get into the video, let's talk about the blue post, and let's cover my thoughts on everything as well. Once again, rant warning, so be warned about that. Now first, we have the blue post. I'm also playing some coverage of me doing the Incursions yesterday, so you can see how much experience we get and how fast we get it as well. Now, here's the blue post. We have been having a blast watching everyone enjoying themselves in the Nightmare Incursions over the past few days. I don't really think anyone has, apart from the first hour or something, but hey. But we wanted to give you a little bit of an advanced notice for a change we plan to make early next week and give you a bit of an explanation of our reasoning and how we decided on this adjustment. We always intended for Nightmare Incursions to be a very valuable source of experience, but one thing we did not intend was that they would be so much better than most other forms of experience gained between level 40 and level 50. We have become concerned that my nightmare incursions may overshadow most other activities in the game in their current form, and while we are all having a lot of fun, we would hate for folks to feel like they need to entirely eschew the rest of the level 40 to 50 level of content for the entire phase. As a result, we will be making an adjustment on Monday to increase the magnitude of Discoverer's Delight Experience buff. We are still working through the percentages we will adjust, but we are likely going to increase the level 14 to 49 buff from 50% to 75% or slightly more. To offset this, we will be reducing the amount of experience gained from mission quests in Nightmare Incursions. One thing to note is that while we will reduce experience from Nightmare Incursions missions, the creatures within the Nightmare themselves are still impacted by the delight, the buff, right? As a result, they will become more lucrative as well with this adjustment, and they already have a higher than normal multiplier on their experience gain. This will serve to make kill quests within the dream more lucrative compared to other types of collection or interaction quest, which we feel also helps correct and imbalance there as well. Ultimately, we love Nightmare Incursions and think they are a flavorful, fun addition to Season of Discovery, but we totally recognize that they run the risk of too much of a good thing, and becoming stale to players, particularly leveling multiple characters as they are currently such a strong source of experience. We feel that this is the the best compromise to keep incursions rewarding while also encouraging participating in questing and dungeons without feeling like you're leaving so much efficiency on the table. We wanted to let you know this ahead of time, that being said, or however, so if you are enjoying Nightmare Incursions as is, you can continue as you have been throughout the rest of the weekend before we offset some of these experience gains to other activities. We again want to thank everyone for participating in our wild SOD experiment with us. We go into each phase with ambitious plans 
balance, but sometimes some aspects of the game have some rough edges that require us to make adjustments on the fly to correct outliers like this. As always, we appreciate your patience as we write the story of Season of Discovery together with you. We can't wait for more of you to get into Sunken Temple this weekend, and we are eager to share more information with you on our plans for Phase 4 as we get closer to that release. Now, the raid itself is a whole different topic that is also, I think the raid is bad as it is currently. It is harder than the hardest level 60 raid was back in Classic Era, and if people want progression raiding, they tend to go to retail. In Classic, we want to go in, a lot of people are dad gamers now, they can't raid 3 hours per night, several days a week, like, they can't commit that time. They want to go in, most people want to pug as well, and just get loot. Go in, smack bosses, get loot, have a, have a blast, and go back home again. And then pug again the next week. So currently, in its current form, Sunken Temple does not really look puggable at all, and also looks like a progression raid, more than a farming raid, or more than a loot raid. Which I wouldn't mind for level 60. The jump from the raid so far, like BFD was easy, Nomer again was like, okay, and now we have this. Like, what's happening? Are we just scaling the magnitude of the difficulty of raids by a hundred times every single phase? Is that the plan? Like, how difficult are raids going to be next phase? Are we just spending a thousand hours to get the raid down? It's looking like if we're going to keep scaling this way, it's going to be insane. But once again, that's a whole different topic that I shouldn't really talk about now. Let's talk about the Nightmare Incursions, that's the blue post, so now you know what they're doing to fix some of the issues that I have, and to be fair, many of the fixes that are coming will be helping a little bit. Now the issues that I have is that first of all, once again I have 5 level 50s, leveling is going way too fast. When you're leveling inside the, the Nightmare Incursions, it's going way too fast, and it's not just because of the experience gain, it's also because the quests are mindless, you're running in a lap completing the same 6 to 11 quests, depending on the, the quest you do, like sometimes you kill the bosses, sometimes you don't, sometimes you get the escorts, sometimes you don't, so you're getting 6 to 11 quests in a 5 to 10 minute run, and then you run back out, hand in quests, and share again. It is very repetitive. It's something that people don't do because it's fun, it's something that people do because you can just spam it over and over, like it's spammable, it's mindless, and it's also all in one zone. Why do you think people farm dungeons? Questing is a really good experience per hour when you're questing, but all the travel time, that's where the experience per hour goes down. Inside dungeons, there's no travel time, you go from pool to pool to pool to pool. In Nightmare Incursions, you can be in one zone, like you can do level 24 or 25 to 40 in Duskwood like in that incursion, 25 to 37 or something, and then you can go at level 37 plus, you can go to Ashenvale and start the Ashenvale incursions all the way to level 50. So literally from level 25 to 50, I think you can even start us with a below 25. So in those level brackets, all you have to do is be in two zones. 24-7. And, here's the thing, you're getting reputation where you want to be friendly to get the rune anyway, you also kind of want to be honored to get the tier set, so you're, you, you're incentivized to level inside incursions because you get, first of all, a rune and tier sets. Now, being able to level up all the way from 25 to 50 in one slash two zones is very anti-classic to me. Like, do you remember back in Classic 1 when you had to, for example, as an alliance, you had to go from Westfall to Red Ridge, back to Westfall, back to Red Ridge, back to Westfall, back to Red Ridge, and then start Duskwood. Like, you would have to travel to different zones twice in order to level up. Now, the buff we have for 50% more experience, or 100%, takes that need away, but you're still experiencing the world itself. So one of the big problems I have about this is it completely invalidates anything in the open world. You can just skip to level 50, and the only open world content you have to do is literally getting runes, in which case you go to Wowhead, you look up the fastest guide, you get the rune, and then you start raid logging. So you're never doing anything in the open world. To me, a part, a huge part of what makes Classic Wow Classic 
if you see people in the open world. Do you remember back in like uh, one year ago, a little bit more than one year ago, the big resurgence on Classic Era? What everyone was talking about was that you finally saw people in the open world. You could go to Goldshire and you saw a thousand people. You could go to Sentinel Hill in Westfall, you saw a thousand people. If you were playing Horde and went to Crossroads, you saw a thousand people. People were ecstatic about be see being able to see people in the open world. And what does Blizzard do about this? They make Seasonal Discovery, which has been a big hit so far, and then they take everything that made Classic WoW and throws it in the bin. Puts in a retail, this is like, what incursions are? It's a spammable retail world quest. It's a retail world quest, but in a zone. So you're in a zone doing retail world quests, and it's spammable. They're trying their best to turn you into a retail player. Like, that is what this event is. It is so anti-classic. It takes all the need out of the open world. You're spamming two zones for f 25 levels, skipping so many zones as well. well. Because you're able to, you're incentivized to, you get so much gold from these quests as well. Like, when you're questing, not all the quests gives you, gives you gold. When you're doing incursions, every single quest gives you gold. And then plus 300% thanks to the buff. This is the best way to make gold while you're leveling or while you're questing. So like, it is, you're getting gear, you're farming gear, you can get the trinkets while leveling, the rings while leveling, you can even farm for your level 50 pre-raid vesting slot, aka the tier set. So you can start farming for those while leveling. So you're getting the most gold you can get while you're questing, you're working towards your end game biz, you're working towards a rune, you're getting trinkets while leveling. The incentive to do this while you're leveling is so massive, it takes all the incentive to do open world quests away from you. And a big problem I had was that my two first two level 50s, I did not do incursions. And finding dungeon groups for any dungeons was actually a problem, because everyone was spamming incursions, as they are right now. People just spam incursions. So finding a level group for Sulfaric or Maraudin was very difficult. When I was trying to do Sulfaric, do you know what people said? LFM Sulfaric level 50 only, because they want you to farm incursions, get your tier set, and then do Sulfaric. So thanks to this, we now have another barrier to entry for pugging random dungeons while leveling, where people are now requiring you to be level 50 and if you're not level 50 do you know some of the messages i get like i say that i'm a level 47 or 46 warrior looking for group sulfuric some of the messages i get is go do your nightmare incursions get to level 50 buy the tier set and then come back like, they are gatekeeping regular dungeons now because of this, and there's also way less people once again doing those dungeons because you don't have to do them while leveling up. So the only people doing it now is either for the trinket or certain quest rewards, which really most dungeons don't have. It's only Moradin for Trashblade that is good, and also like Blackstone Ring, and even the mages can really use a dagger which has a really low drop chance, but there's really low incentive to do dungeons while you're leveling, and even even at max level. You have a couple of runes that you get really fast, but like once again they are really fast, so not a lot of people at the end of the game will be doing dungeons, and the ones that are requires you as well to be level 50. Like if they are level 50, they also want you to be level 50, and because so many people are level 50 thanks to this incursions, it's just way harder once again to find the dungeons while you're level leveling, so you're incentivized even further to keep doing nightmare incursions, because now first of all you see less people in the open world, World. There's less people to group with in the open world for elite quests, for example, group quests, and it's harder to find dungeons. In that case, what are you left with? Solo questing, mob farming, nightmare incursions. That's like what you're left with here when it comes to leveling. This is not good. Now, one last thing to rant about when it comes to the Nightmare Incursions is the first 10 hours when doing Nightmare Incursions gave you about 150 to 200 gold per hour. I have a friend who made over a thousand gold doing only Nightmare Incursions, basically doing the same route that I'm doing now. And the reasoning why is that the quests gave you over two gold each. They gave you between two and three and a half, I think, for every single quest. Referring back to now, you make way less. And some of the bosses also, like, the boss kills gave you even more, so, like, some of them gave you even more as well. Basically, people made hundreds of gold 
doing nightmare incursions the first 10 hours so it really enforces the um it enforces the um the saying of exploit early exploit often now the only thing i have to say here is how in the unholy heavens was this a thing like i'm i, I just I'm, I'm sorry i just have to question the developers here how did they oversee this and not think this was going to happen they make a repeatable event that was on the sign repeatable and they wanted it to be repeatable. They knew the quests were repeatable and they decided to put one gold into every single quest. Knowing that they had put in, in phase 2, a 300% gold multiplier to quests. Like this is one of the biggest buffs we have had recently and it came in phase two like they they should have this at the back of their heads that they put in a experience multiplier that also gave you 300 percent gold from quests and then you put one to two gold as the base reward from a quest knowing it's repeatable and knowing you literally have to walk 70 yards and pick up an item and then like the lap takes five minutes like, five minutes of internal testing could make this not happen. Just like, when you're making the quests, you do the quests yourself while you're doing internal testing, and you see how much gold you make. And then you can think about players probably optimizing it even further. Because like, there's less mobs here. We don't pull anything. We just run around and loot stuff. I simply don't understand how that happened. Like, I'm sorry if that sounds negative, but I really don't. It's one of the recent big buffs we have had to help people make gold from questing. And then they put like one to two gold as a base to reward from a quest. And don't think it's going to be insane and get abused. It's almost like they want you to exploit early and exploit often in that case. But with all that ranting out of the way, once again, this blue post will fix a little bit of the problem that they're adjusting the buff to give 75%. That being said, the buff is active inside the Nightmare Incursions. If they really wanted to de-incentivize people to um, disincentivize, I have no idea, people from doing incursions, make the buff not active then. Like, make sure the open world and doing dungeons is still the best way to level, because if this one is even competitive, in being good for leveling. People will do this because it's all in one zone. The benefits of doing this is that you never have to move. You can do 10 levels, actually 13 levels in one place. So you can do 13 levels over here and you can do more than 13 levels. Like you can do 13 levels in Ashtonvale and you can do more than 13 levels in Duskwood at those three incursion areas. So if this is even the same experience as regular questing, people will and should choose to keep doing this because in that case you never have to move you're repeating the same quest it's the easiest way the fastest way and it's all in one place you're also once again working towards your end the game bis and your runes so you're working towards the end the game while you're leveling so if this is even a competitive way to level up people will still choose to do this the only way to make people not do this is make sure the open world questing and regular dungeon farming is still better it literally has to be better, and with this buff, even now, like once again, Discoverer's Delight is active inside Nightmare Incursions, make it not active. But for me, the way I would see, want to see this, and what I was hoping from the start, was that this would not be repetitive. If anyone here has played Legion, the Legion Invasions were actually pretty good, and it should work like Legion Invasions. This is an invasion. It's called an incursion. It's basically a more regular invasion. It's an invasion happening occasionally, constantly, or regularly. That's an incursion. So what should be happening here is the it should work like Legion Invasions, which TLDR, every either four, five, or six hours, one incursion, like, or all of them, should be active for one hour. Let's just say on a four hour rotation. That means you could do incursions if you stay up all day. You could do incursions for six hours on a daily basis. Because four hours, 24 hours in a day, six incursions. So every four hours you can do incursions for one hour. So four hours, like, let's just say at 12 p.m. Like, at noon. At noon... 
the incursions are open until 1 in the morning, and at exactly 1 the portals close, which means if you're inside you get phased out, so you have to just get out and hand in your quest before 1, and then once again at 4 p.m. as well, the portals open again, you can go inside, do your quest for 1 hour, and at 5 p.m. the portals close, and if you're inside you literally get phased out. That way you still make sure that people have the option to level fast inside the incursions, and they can still choose to only log on during those incursions if they want to, but if they want to level for 4 hours continuously, then they would have to do some open world questing and they would have to do some dungeons as well. Let me know what you think about that kind of idea in the comments down below. Now that's been a 20 minute rant, I think I'm going to close the rant there. If you want to make gold in Season of Discovery Phase 3, uh, make sure to check out my gold making guide, it's going to be linked down below. It's a 150 seven pages long document for gold making in Season of Discovery. Also had a phase two update. I'm working on a phase three update. We also have eight videos in early access for phase three, covering some of the best investments and some of the best gold farms you can do right now in phase three. That will also be going public very gradually over time. We have one coming out today and one coming out tomorrow. If you want even more gold making than that, I'm also doing one video per month exclusively on Patreon, and you can check out my Patreon in the link down below as well in the video description or the pinned comment. Now that's pretty much what I have for you, so once again, let me know your thoughts on everything, especially the incursions in the comments down below. Leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the video, spread the message, subscribe for more classic WoW content, and as always, thank you for watching. I will see you again very soon.